so so for tonight um uh chapter 17 no 17 is the number of victory so the lord really wants us to experience heaven on earth and the chapter actually begins with um pastor Pins explaining and proclaiming actually and pre prophesying actually that for each and every one of us actually the the context of the verse which i will which i will flash in in, in a while is the context of that is marriage because marriage is a um it's an institution that god has given us for us to understand his heart so alam niyo na kung nung discuss natin ngayong gabi di ba <laughs> anyway so i know that it's gonna blow your socks off again it's gonna bless you tremendously because um some of the 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 things that i'm going to tell you i've already i've already um uh, discussed it last saturday and last sunday because i received actually a very special word a very very specific word actually which actually awoke me in the middle of my saturday nap and which prompted me to uh, know to change the deck the Wednesday our Wednesday deck for the Saturday deck but itong deck na to it's um uh so syempre a kinostomize for 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 this topic but uh, um i know that uh, it's going to bless you as um it's going to bless me still as as we proclaim the gospel as as the gospel is uh, going to be proclaimed tonight okay so this is a picture that the lord wants you and i to really talk tuck in in our hearts because this is his heart for you and I. Your wife will be as a fruitful vine. You and I. Tayong lahat dito ha. Tayong lahat including Ella, including Anda, including Doki. Your wife will be as a fruitful vine. Fruitful. Fruitful. The one, di ba si Lord yung vine and we are the branches, right? Because the Lord sees the vine and the branches as one. So in the innermost parts of your house, your children like olive plants around your table. So this is the picture that the Lord wants us to have. Um, olive plants, by the way, is um, the national plant or tree of Israel. And it's forbidden to cut an olive plant in the nation of Israel. So yung mga olive trees in the Gethsemane, when you go to Israel, as I've seen it actually in 2013, those are the same olive trees uh who uh were witness to the shedding of uh uh of the um shedding of tears um of our lord jesus christ by yung, yung blood tears it's the same so when you go there you know you go 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 immediately to get and you will see anyway so this is a picture of um this is abba abba daddy god's picture for you and i Hallelujah. So the book, actually, the chapter opens in the book of Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy 11.13. God tells the Israelites to hearken diligently to his commandments, to his Torah, to his law and instruction. So yung ano dito yung commandments dito, Torah, which, which means, um, naaral natin last week, right? Which means his um, teachings, his instruction, and it's, it's um, actually in the New Covenant, it's our Lord Jesus Christ. Hearken diligently to Him. Hearken diligently is made up shama. Is made up of shama, shama, which literally means listen, listen. So we know that if a Hebrew word or a Greek word is repeated twice, it means absolute truth. It means, it means the Lord's emphasis. The emphasis of His voice is there. Okay, so. Naalala natin also last um, chapter 15 and chapter 16, how faith comes. Romans 10, 17. So then, it comes by hearing and hearing. Shama, shama. Hearken diligently by the word of Christ. So it's not necessarily, di ba, when you ask people if they believe in God, they will say immediately yes. But if you say, do you believe in Jesus Christ, then all hell breaks loose. Di ba, there's great opposition because... It is actually the word of Christ that you that we are supposed to hear and hear because in it is the gospel. Hallelujah. That brings to salvation. So ito yung interlinear. Ha? So the Greek word. So that's why um, the, the Holy Spirit is very specific. Right? Very specific that 
whose voice are going to are are we going to hear? It's the it's the it's the the emphasis of God's voice. The emphasis of Abba Daddy God's voice is on Jesus. So to be to be full of faith, to be fully persuaded, to be totally convinced, and to be absolutely assured, and to have fidelity or confident trust is to hear and hear the word of Christ. You know, last Sunday, um, because I'm very near my my house is very near the clubhouse and the the church. So I you you know what that the 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 rosary is uh is actually a meditation. I don't know if I mentioned it. And then while I was ano minding my plants, looking at my plants, I can hear them. I can hear them say, "A holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death." Eh, uh, now at and at the hour of our death, amen. It's very deadly, man. <laughs> it's a very deadly meditation. So you wonder why? No, you, you don't have to wonder. Actually, while men, uh, that uh, many Christians are sick, right? Because there are actually uh, um, Catholics or Christians. But then, if you are pronouncing actually your death continuously, then it shall come to pass. Anyway, so faith is. Being fully persuaded only by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the Bible makes it clear that faith comes by hearing a preacher who brings the word of Christ. I don't, I, I, I'm not belittling reading because we're, we're supposed to read to read the word of God. But what 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 am I saying here? So when we read the word, we hear the voice behind behind the behind the book. Okay, let, let me explain that. So it please. Um, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. So the emphasis, the the emphasis of all of the the Bible from the Old Covenant, Old Testament, all the way to the New Testament, right, is for him for for us to be saved through 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you to save them is to be properly delivered out of danger into safety. God rescuing believers from the penalty and power of sin. So from us, he's saving us from being separated from him, now into union with him, with our Savior. So, meron ako isang kwento, which I don't think I made kwento last Wednesday. So just to drive home the point. I remember, um, hindi pala six years old, kasi nung, nung Saturday tsaka Sunday, I thought it was six, year, six years old. Kinurek ako ni, ni Alex when we had our vacation, our um, family went to the US. So kasama namin yung tatlo, tatlo na pala yung mga anak namin nun. So si Ezra, tatlo na ba o dalawa? Dalawa pa lang. Tatlo na, pero baby si uh, baby, baby si Sam. So tatlo. Pero si, si Gab, kasi yung middle namin, three years old. You know what? We went to the... We went to Universal Studios. Eh, di ba ang laki ng Universal Studios doon? Malaki yung sa Singapore, but it's uh, bigger in, ano, in um, LA ba yun? LA, oh doon. LA. So, eh, di, eh nag-enjoy kami. Siyempre, Filipinos, no? Sulitin ng pera. Tang na sa fireworks, right? So, nung ano na, so nag-enjoy kami, bili kami ng souvenir, ganyan. So, we were, we were, we were talagang really tight. My, my, my kids were with me. Si, 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 si Sam na naka-stroller pa. Pero si Gabby, in a split second na wala. Grabe na wala. And, and to make things more complicated, it's already exit time. And then people are, are thronging, are making an exodus to the exit. And it's America. Di ba pag nawala ang bata, napaka-probable, na highly probable, na mga, hindi mo na siya makita. So talaga, oh, natisigaw ako. So, sin, yung, the pain of being separated from my child, yung, yung, yung puso ko nandito na sa lalamunan ko, na, na talaga iyak na kami ng iyak. Si Alex, you know, be, be, although hindi siya kasing dramatic ko, syempre talagang hindi na kami mapakali. Okay, hanggang sa, eto na, numipis yung ano, it, 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 it felt like eternity, you know, yung separation. At talaga, talaga nap, napaupo na nga ako, parang, so, Lord, yung anak ko, ganyan, ganyan. Jesus. Hanggang sa nung ipi, hanggang ngayon, very clear yung, ano, very clear yung, yung picture. You know what, nung lumipis na yung crowd, you know, 
there in the middle of the road, yung pa-exit pa pa na, nandun si Gab, full of ano, uh, um, uh, uhog. Iyak din siya ng iyak. And then you know what we did? We just hugged on him. We just loved on him. Talagang, uh, we, just, we were just so happy that we found him. You know that it's um it's the it's a, it's a glimpse. It 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 went all back to me as I remembered that the Lord really, really, you know, the pain of us being separated from Him. That is why He came down. He came down because He cannot stand to be separated with you and I. He cannot stand it. That's why He gave one is He gave His one. And only son. You know, in the NLT version, this is how he loved us. You know, because the NKJV for God so loved the world. But the New Living, a New Living Translation, it 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 says like this: This is how God loved us that He gave His one and only Son. He gave us the best, so that there will be no more separation. That we will that we will experience heaven on earth. And the glimpse of that is actually our marriage, our marriage as a husband and a wife. Hallelujah! And I just like to um, um to as early as now. Actually, we will we'll go through that. The emphasis, the emphasis of his voice, because it's not enough to just read the Bible, but we have to look. We have to look. We have to hear his emphasis. Ano ba yung emphasis niya? Ano ba yung pinakadidiin niya, di ba, sa mga nanay natin? O, tandaan mo to ha, tandaan mo to, di ba? It's just, he loved us so much. He doesn't want us to be separated from him. He wants us to be united with him. That's why he sent Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, and this is a picture of meditation as as we've learned last week, right? Uh, Mary was actually meditating on the Lord. She was busy being impressed by Jesus. Being impressed by the finished work, while Martha is busy being is busy impressing Jesus. Okay, so he wants us to know not just what he says, but how he says it. He says it. That's why, si Mary, si Mary, she was so focused on him. Her eyes locked on the Lord. Her eyes locked on his bride, on on her bridegroom. Yun yung meditation. Hallelujah. So his emphasis, his thoughts. His heart, what he believes, what he really means by his words, what's behind his words. He wants us to know his spirit. We are to understand his words, to know his spirit. Because to know his spirit is to understand the emphasis of his voice. And it's the same as, and I was uh, uh, being amused by um, the conversation a while ago. When we had this conversation with our husbands, right? This is the way the, this is the, way the Lord wants us to to converse or to communicate with our husbands, with our wives, right? To really focus, right? To look for the emphasis of the bride and the bridegroom's voice. What is the emphasis of his voice? What, what is the emphasis? It's not, it's not actually, for example, uh, in, uh, um, the wife um, uh, making um, requests, for example, mahilig din ako mag-utos. Pero I've understand through the through the years actually how to put emphasis so that it's going to be not uh, pag-uutos but actually being sweet. Yeah. And so the Lord Jesus, when we read this, when we read this, uh, when we read the Bible, when we hear his, when we when we hear and hear, let's look for the emphasis. How do we hear his voice? It's very sweet, right? It's very gentle. The sheep knows his voice. Hallelujah. So let me show you how it's how easy it is uh, it is for different people to take different meanings from exactly the same statement. And it's also a learn it's also for us to learn how to communicate properly, how to put emphasis on uh on uh, uh or the, the proper tone. Okay, so for example, so listen to my voice and how the tone of my voice change as my emphasis changes, so to the meaning of the statement. So for example, this is a seven word statement. I never said she stole my wallet. 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 
I never said she stole my wallet. So see the em where the emphasis is. So it's the, in the same manner, no matter how many times you read that sentence on the page of your Bible, only hearing, hearing as we focus on him, right? The author speaking it out. And so hearing where he places the emphasis can reveal to you what was in his heart when he wrote it. Jesus, our Lord Jesus did not say, my sheep can read. But he said, my sheep hear my voice. In those love letters to us in the epistles, let's look for the emphasis. Hallelujah. And we know the emphasis, right? The emphasis is his love towards you. That he want, He doesn't want to be separated from you. He doesn't just want to know his words. He just, he just doesn't want us to know his words. He wants us to know his voice. That's why it's very precious when love, lovers, right? It's not the sound of silence, right? But it's the exchange of loving words and gentle words that sweeps off the uh, sweeps uh, 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 sweeps off the, the the feet of the bride to the nandili, to the bridegroom, diba? Uh, it's the the sweetest sweetest um um gentle words of the manliligaw to the to the girl, right? Who sweeps off the the girl's feet and eventually will make her say yes. So. Good news, on the day of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit actually is the one who, who makes us or enables us to, to, um, to, to know the emphasis of his voice. Because the Holy Spirit was given to the church. So we not only read the book, but hear the loving, kind voice of our shepherd, of our loving Savior, of our bridegroom. In Acts 2, 1 and 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Look at that. Look at the emphasis. The, the Lord was in a hurry to give the Holy Spirit, right? Because he doesn't want us to live like orphans. He wants us to hear his voice. He wants us to feel that he's so near. Hallelujah. He doesn't want us to feel that we are separated from him. So when we shama shama, when we hear and hear, this is what the Lord promises us. That this is this is the emphasis of his voice. That our days may be multiplied, and that the days of our children in the land which the Lord swear unto our fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. He doesn't want us to be defeated, he doesn't want us to live a very sorry life or a sad life. He wants our days to be heaven on earth. Days of heaven on earth is the context of a happy family life. And remember, this is going to happen and this is happening or already finished because of the covenant, because we are all in covenant. I wa This morning, actually, um, and since um, yesterday, actually, I was kind of a bit, you know, uh -huh. Not feeling so um, uh, attuned, and that is the and and the reason behind that is um, okay. I, I have to hear and hear and hear. So and then I was I was and then I heard the emphasis. And you and what came to my heart is Joe. Remember, remember the the story of David. Remember that you just like David is in covenant with me. You know that the word covenant is berit in hebrew covenant is berit which the word which which is the word for a pledge or alliance so kanina i was i was um i was really happy when um uh, when arlene said um you know as a husband and a wife you are not against each other your husband actually he is for you so likewise the lord is for me because he has pledged and he has alliance himself with me it is a political term where two parties come together and agree to abide by certain terms the root word and 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 the effect of that actually right is eternal life the covenant that god made made with with abba daddy god right because it's the, the covenant is with himself we are only the beneficiary is for us to have an eternal life eternal life is to know him the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So you may say there is forever, 
there is really forever. Love is the greatest power for transformation that exists and the greatest love that exists is the agape, agape of God. And this is what, what he wants us to know, that he wants us to really be immersed and be really convinced every day progressively know his love for us. In Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Let that sink in. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. As I'm saying it, um, we are being bear hug. Hallelujah. So, our katan, our bridegroom, right? And remember that katan is um, uh, the Hebrew word for another Hebrew word for marriage. And because of our union with Christ, because of his sacrifice, you and I are in that amazing and privileged position of, of being the one who's being looked upon with such love and devotion that you have been chosen by Jesus to share his life for eternity, for forever. Hallelujah. You are the central figure with him in this wonderful scenario, in this wedding arranged by our father and his. You're not just a part of the wedding. You're not always the bridesmaid. You are his bride. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 62, 5b, And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word bridegroom here, Katan, is another word for marriage. So the bridegroom, the 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 the, uh, the guys like Ruel, right? It's you, you. You know, you are the you are marriage. Look at yourself as you know the 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 one that um it's the one it's a picture. You're a picture of you're a glimpse of the heart of Abba. Hallelujah. You are katan. You are marriage. So, and we, we girls, right? Kala. Kala are the betrothed or the bride. You and I, right, are supposed to be looked upon by our husbands as bride, not, not wives, actually. You don't treat your, your, your woman as the wife, but as the bride. How you how how do you how, the, the the passion that you feel for your for your woman during your wedding night is what the Lord is telling telling you and I telling actually specifically the guy see si Kuya Ruel at this point at uh, at this time you look at your you look at your wife as your bride not actually your wife because you know wife mm, pretty girl <laughs> this is wife no you look at your you you look at your your woman actually your isha as your bride because that's how the lord looks at you and i as the bride as the betrothed one and the root word for bride right is complete so we find our completeness in our lord jesus the wife is complete with the or the bride is complete with the bridegroom so now you say to your husbands uh so you say to your uh brides here right the, the girls you say to your husbands you complete me. And when you say to your wife, right, I complete you. Oh, diba? You call her your bride. Hallelujah. And remember always, so when, when you are ha have an argument, you, when you have a misunderstanding, remember your honeymoon. That's actually what the Lord is saying. S the perspective, your lens, your spectacles. You should see each other in the perspective of your honeymoon period. You are the bride and he is your bridegroom. Hallelujah. So, as simple as it seems, our determined attempts to improve ourselves or even our sincere prayers for God to help us change do not facilitate transformation, sadly. <laughs> what revolutionizes lives is the love of the Father at work in us through his Son by the power of his Spirit. That's why when we, when we look, when we have this perspective, right, from the perspective of the cross, that we look at, uh, at each other like during the honeymoon period as wives and bridegroom. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ, love the church. 
this is you know uh, this is super super um revelatory and super heavy how 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 are the husbands supposed to love the the wives as christ loved the church as christ loved the church how did how did christ love his church by giving himself to the church how, by giving himself to the church by how by loving loving her with her with his words and gave himself gave himself up for her. So you, the husbands cannot love the, the the wives unless the husband knows how he is loved by Jesus Christ first and foremost. When there's no revelation that the husband is loved by Jesus, the husband cannot love the wives as Christ loved the church. That's why it's so important that the husbands have a revelation of how, of how Christ loved him. You know, as my testimony, just like you, when we uh, ours is a whirlwind um, romance. We didn't have a ano um uh, si, si Alex ako ganun, no? <laughs> okay, kidding. Anyway, uh, si Alex kasi gusto na akong pakasalan agad. Kakakasagot ko lang sa kanya. Gusto niya na akong pakasalan. Ganyan sabi ko, hello, matagal magpagawa ng Friday board. <laughs> anyway, so we we had like a very short engagement and then we got married right away. And then for the first how many months and of um actually years. Syempre away, diba? <laughs> away. You're discovering new things, right? Keep suddenly two people from different cultures and different uh not not the one cultures because we're uh we're Ilocanos, but different upbringings come together. Ganyan. You know what? Um we we were Christians actually we met in the church ganyan we know we know yung uh, we we went through the counseling b before and then we know the teachings etc about marriage ganyan ganyan we 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 actually we had um relatively happy marriage actually we had children right away three pa nga but then you know um there is more actually um there's a progression that happened when uh, we we married actually 1997 and then in 2010 ito na yung kwento na naligaw ako sa Singapore kasi gusto kong mag-shopping anyway sa kakahanap ko ng sale na napadpada ko sa New Creation Church <laughs> without knowing it and then nahiya na nga ako naupo ako linggo pala anyway to make the long story short i i there was a, there, there was a revolu revolution in my heart i I heard for the first time the gospel of grace and, and it revolutionized me. And then I started to, when I came back from Singapore, I, from Singapore, kasi hindi pa ako nakabisa sa Singapore nun, I shared it with my, I shared it with Alex. So, alam niya, hindi ko yung magkaintindihan. Nag-away pa nga kami actually. <laughs> when I was sharing to him, sabi niya, hindi ka, hindi ka, anyway, anyway. You know what? Um, wisdom from uh, from the Lord. Ito rin, yung, ito rin yung how you say it, right? Sabi ko, Lord, turuan mo ako. Paano ba to? I know in my heart that it's it's correct, but I cannot say it properly. So, I said, but ano mo nga, pakinggan mo nga, baka naman mali ako. O, di ba? Eh, we were actually at that time, um, um, commuting, we had separate cars, so ako papunta ako ng Ortiga, siya papunta ng Makati. So, to make the long story short, pinakinggan naman niya, actually, pinakinggan niya niya. After how many days, you know what he approached me? He said, Alam mo, tama. And then that began actually our journey. In coming dalawa, we discovered it. Um, uh, no, we separately understood it. Kasi hindi ko ma-explain sa kanya. So si Pastor Pins explain sa kanya. You know what? Talagang na-addict kami. Until the, to the point na, you know, pinag-uusapan namin um, in, the, in, in the evening is, Uy, ano mo masasabi mo dito sa verse na ito? Mga ganong level. Mga ganong level and up until now, actually, um, you know, as um, as the days pass by, the, the, quar the quarrels um, became lesser and lesser. Actually, ang isa lang quarrel namin noon ay yung pagbabay. Actually, yung pagbabay. Kasi, ano, hindi ko talaga maintindihan. Ganyan. Ang bakit, bakit ang asawa ko ay adik na adik sa pagbabay. Pinila niya ako ng bike, Hindi ko naman ginamit, so pinagbili niya. Anyway, kailan mo ako unang pinagbili ng bike? 2010? Tama ba? Hindi naman siguro. Mga later pa. O, mga ganon. Anyway, 
you know, siguro mga 2012, no? You know, nag-decide ako without him. Hindi niya na ako pinila, tinayaan niya na ako. Nag-decide ako mag-bike. 2020. Pandemic. <laughs> Pandemic, July. And now ngayon, kanina umaga, oh, ito na, mag-bike na tayo. Oh, siya, ayaw mag-bike. <laughs> o, oh, diba? Anyway, what, what my, my point is, my point is, it's the, it's the, the realization of God's love for each and, for each of us. You know, he's, Ma, he has his own journey. He's discovering, you know, the the depth and the 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 width of Jesus' love for him, and 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 that's why he can he can throw it to me, right? So, wala na yung mga ano, wala na yung mga maliliit na bagay na na mga kwaral kwaral. O minsan lang kanya, <laughs> minsan lang. <laughs> Pero um, wala na rin yung ano kung hindi man kung hindi if it's so ang principle ganito, if it's not um, a matter of principle, just let it go. And the ultimate say, the ultimate, the ultimate um, decision, actually, the ultimate um, judge is the word of God. Yeah. But itong, itong Ephesians 5, 25 to 26, it's a landmark, actually. Husband loves your, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. This means the husband has to know how much Christ loved him. Hallelujah. So, okay, balik tayo sa covenant, ha? It's very important. The original word for covenant is bara. Hindi yung bara as in, uh, pwede din actually na nakabara against um, evil, but bara, okay? It comes from the Semitic root word bara, which means to bind, ah, to cut, to break bread. Hallelujah. His body was broken for us. Hallelujah. The idea of cutting is cutting of bread. So that's why, right? The Lord instituted the, the communion. The communion. Hallelujah. That's why when husband and wives do communion or receive communion together, it's very powerful. And I encourage the, the husband and wives here to really break bread together because it's very powerful. In ancient times, when chieftains sought to form a treaty, they would often have a meal together. So God's new covenant is with himself. For the Father and the Son are one. And now, any man can benefit from this covenant not by his human parentage or performance, but by our position in Christ. This privilege is freely extended to all men by grace, for it is the will of God that no man should perish. 2 Peter 3.9 So, yung word in Matthew, now we go to Matthew 11.28. And this will really bless you. You know, come to me, all you are weary and and weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know that the picture of um rest there is a picture of a camel, actually. So Greek here is um, rest is anapao, to pause from labor. So, so our Lord Jesus spoke this word in Aramaic, which is far, much more poetic and um expressive. The Arama Aramaic word for rest. That is used in this passage is nucha, and this in the picture is is a camel actually resting. So it comes from the root word nahu, which is a reference for a camel's resting place. So a camel, kasi hindi ko alam yung camel kaya share ko din sa inyo. And this will really really open, make your make you understand more Matthew eleven. All the camel is able to carry around 1,000 pounds. Its master will not burden burden him to down with that much weight, but will purposely only weigh him down with just one third of that weight. Its origins as a pack animal, camels were used to carry frankincense, the fragrance of a king. Jesus is saying that he is carrying is the caring master, and the burden we carry is really just the fragrance of our king, who does not force us to carry more than we can bear. When he gives us rest, he's like the camel herder who allows his camels to relax and cool themselves. His burden is like a burden, yes, but one that does not break our ba our backs and one only that carries his fragrance. Kana, no? So, Matthew 11, 29-30. Take, yung take don actually, akala ko dati take as in receive. No, hindi siya lambano. It's airo. Take airo, my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart. 
For you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know that Ira is to lift up, to raise, okay? To lift up, to raise. So, like, yung, yung Ira actually has, it has it's also very much connected to marriage. Marriage in Hebrew is ni, nisuin. The related verb to nisuin is nasa. Pag na nasa, nasa. Nasa has another meaning in Hebrew. It also means to carry or to lift up. Doon pala nang galing yung when you carry your bride. Di ba? During the honeymoon, at least ako, uh, ano pa ako noon, uh, uh, 118, ganyan. So Alex was able to carry me. So yung pala yung origin noon. To nasa, to lift, to carry, to take. Hallelujah. So, you know, take my yoke. So Jesus is carrying you, he's lifting you. Hi, he, he, it's, it's not, you know, he's not giving you his, his burden for you to lift it up. No, he's actually lifting you. Hallelujah. So marrying a wife then equals in Hebrew, lift to lifting up or carrying your wife. Or well, ito. So marrying a wife, your bride, then equals in Hebrew to lift up. Or carry your wife, carry your bride. This illuminates the old custom of lifting up and carrying the wife just after the wedding ceremony. Lifting up the bride or the wife has also a symbolic meaning in addition to the physical. So lifting up the wife, it begins with knowing what God thinks of you. God is working to impress and convince you of what he has done for you and in you so that you can love your bride. You can love your husband. Colossians 3, 2 to 3. Set your minds on things above, not on things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. This is the emphasis of his voice. That he wants you to hear and hear and hear. That you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So yung yoke don, a yoke, di ba, um, um, as explained from before was meant to tie two oxen together and for the oxen to move around is a real burden. The one ox had to deal with the dead weight of the other oxen. Matthew 11, 29-11, di ba kanina sabi natin yung take airo. Yung yoke dyan, uh, you zugos upon you and learn from me. You know that in uh, in in in, uh, in the Hebrew, kasi ito Greek ito, ito yung zugos. You know that the Hebrew is salak. And you know, I almost fell from my chair. Salak, yoke, is to forgive, to pardon. Hallelujah. His yoke, his union, actually, is forgiveness. It's to pardon. So salak, its Semitic origin, it comes from an old Akkadian word, salu, sinalonya, actually, which means to take off. It was used when a farmer would remove the yoke from his oxen. So when God forgives us, he removes that dead weight of sin from us. He unburdens us. So in, in a manner, right, when we look at our bride, when we look at our husbands, we now we we, we know, right, we, we, we know that, ah, yung pala yun, take my yoke. And it's actually the Lord lifting you. And the yoke is, is forgiving us. Now we can easily forgive. Hallelujah! Because God has forgiven us, the yoke is no more. The, he has forgiven us, He has pardoned us, He has unburdened us. And now we come to, uh, to, to another emphasis of His voice in Isaiah 53 verse 5. You know that we, we all know this, but um, you know, ito yung, ito yung specific word last Saturday that woke me up actually. The Lord, the, the Lord I, 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 I clearly heard it. Check Isaiah 53, verse 5. And so now, I will share with you. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. By his stripes, we are healed. Yung wounded don, kalal is to pier is pierce. To bore, to pierce. The word wounded comes from the root word kalal and is a pl part in the pl participle form it's just the um, hebrew gr grammatical uh form okay it really means to pierce being in a pl form would make it a fatal wound jesus took 
all the fatal wound for you and I. Hallelujah. The word is spelled, spelled check, lamed, lamed. The word for praise is hey, lamed, lamed. So this is sort of an ironic play on the words. Because of his wounding, because of his fatal wounding, because of his piercing, it was for us to be redeemed from our transgression. His word, words turns us to praise. Hallelujah. He was bruised. Daka to crush. The word crush is daka, which is in pool form. This means to be crushed or broken. His body was broken. Symbolized, right? When we break the bread. Hallelujah. The word is also used to express a broken or crushed heart. It was from our iniquities he suffered a broken heart. Kabura. Kabura. Stripe. Actually, it's a strike, walang S, or blow. The Lord was striped so many times that it became one big strike. Hallelujah. You know, um, it means blueness, bruise, hurt, stripe, or wound. But it also comes from the root word kabar. And this will really bless you. You know that the root word kabar from kabura, stripe, is the word to unite, to be joined, to be knotted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chet Beth Resh. So by his stripe, you are bounded to him. You are joined to him seamlessly together. The word is also used to reference the bonding between a husband and a wife. Hallelujah. By his stripe. You and your wife are bonded together. Hallelujah. You are united to him by his stripe. Sid Roth, who is a, a Jewish preacher, said the word stripe could, could also mean a friend. The literal meaning is reference to the fact that his death led to our union with him. So it is what you call the stripe that bind. By his stripe. By his stripe. You are bounded to Jesus Christ. You are united to Him. You are in union with Him. Hallelujah. So perhaps that is what Paul meant by the fellowship of His suffering. By having suffered, He is able to unite, bond with us in our suffering from conquering physical suffering through His resurrection. Through His resurrection, we are healed by joining or bonding with Him. By our union with Him, we are healed. You can say that. By our union with Him, we are healed. Hallelujah. You know yung, yung, um, the word kabar? And this will uh, blow your socks off. Yung chet na aral natin last week, right? It's the eighth letter. And it also means resurrection life. It means beginnings. It means new birth. The word kabar, stripes, is spelled with chet, which represents the union of God and man. Beth represents our heart and God's heart in union together. Resh represents our joining with the power of God through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So the challenge facing us, church, ecclesia, the bride today, is not that the world isn't listening, the words of the bride, but that the church isn't hearing the thoughts of God. He wants us to hear his emphasis. What is the emphasis? Where is the emphasis? His emphasis is by his tribe. By his union with you, you are healed. Emmanuel, God with us. The emphasis of his voice is not our life, not our toiling, not our performance for God, but his life in us. To know his spirit is to hear the emphasis of his voice. The cry of his heart for us to have a profound revelation that we are one with him. That we are one with him. In union with Christ. That's why in, in 1 John 4, 17, the Amplified Version, and I sent this to you this morning, the gospel declares, the gospel, the emphasis of his voice, come as you are and live as he is. In this union and fellowship with him, love is completed. Completed. The bride completed and perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. What does it mean in the day of judgment? When challenges arises. When there is a problem, right? You can face with assurance and boldness because as he is, so are you in this world because you are so united with him. By his stripe, 
you are healed. By your union with him, you are healed. Our absolute closeness and joined together. Position in and with Jesus comes by his wounds. He bore it for us. We are joined, joint, bound together with him, united with him when he was crushed on our behalf in all his sufferings. We are healed. Everything from our marriage, from our physical body, from our, from our finances, with our careers, we are healed. We are restored. We are prosperous. And that, my dear sisters and brothers, is chapter 17.